well, luckily they're uploading fast enough, or else you wouldn't get these other. This is a prayer spot now. I prayed out here early in the morning, maybe for about a year, but I, I would walk. I made this little prayer spot. I had a little uh, area that I made as a sanctuary out here. And there's a lot of prayers that have gone up a few years ago all through this area. You know, in Scripture, I was talking to my friend Austin the other day. And Austin, he was reading a lot of the other books that are occult sources or some that are just other books, the Wisdom of Solomon. There's some in Scripture that are referred to as Song of Solomon and all. But some of these books, they're kind of occult books. And you practice. I've had friends in the occult. I've had showdowns with people in the occult who died. Not by my hand, but in a spiritual warfare. I've told those stories before. So I, I, I was telling Austin, I said, there's so many keys. And Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. So everybody doesn't get to see so the most powerful manifestations of the kingdom that have taken place for centuries. Some of those only took place because the people that were functioning in those things never revealed. Okay? But then the scripture that says in Daniel the prophet, God says, there's going to be this time of trouble. <laughs> no man's going to stand with you in this except Michael, the supernatural warring angel, Michael the archangel. <laughs> but at the end, knowledge will be increased. And many will run back and forth. <laughs> so there's these keys, and I told Austin, I said, every demonic thing that people learn from the books, and some that practice them, they're tapping into a demonic realm that does indeed have a degree of power. And that's what hooks them. And I told Austin, I said, but through Scripture, portions of Scripture that we, we speak have so much more power. But Austin asked me, he said, John, I think you might do some of those things, the uh, occult stuff. I, I said, no, Austin, I don't. I said, I don't. But I use everything in the scripture. There's a Catholic priest, very famous. His name is Padre Pio. And Padre Pio had very supernatural, charismatic gifts that functioned in his ministry. Now, a lot of Protestants uh, don't like Padre Pio because he had what's called the stigmata. Okay? And that's what thing that a lot of Christians question. There's not a lot, which are the marks of the crucifixion in his body. That, and they claim that Padre Pio uh, had those stigmata and the wounds bled. But a lot of the accounts of Padre Pio, one of them is this. People claim that Padre Pio visited them in hospitals and so forth, prayed for them. But later on, there were other people that said, no, he was somewhere else. He was in the church performing the Mass. <laughs> and Austin was asking me about, uh, and others too, on um, astral projection. What that is, is a demonic copy of some of the scriptures you've heard me quote. John, the Apostle in Revelation. The Lord carried me away in the Spirit. And, and even the prophets Daniel and, and Ezekiel, you see God taking them and bringing them. These are not just visions. See, the Lord carried me in the spirit. And in the resurrection, we get a glorified body. One of the guys was discussing that. Okay. You know, there's so much talk in, in the world about like, is there truly like an underground order? Meaning those that are people in positions of power and 
sort of like a secret government. So there's people that we know that are highly influential in society. And certainly they do have their own, men like George Soros, who use their wealth and connections and finances to try to establish what they believe is right things, their liberal viewpoint. But in the kingdom, and Jesus said when they asked him, they were accusing him, you're making yourself equal with God. And he said, didn't you ever read the scripture? He called them gods to whom the word of God came. And then are you accusing me, Jesus says, because I'm the son of God. And then when we read all of these verses that Jesus is the son of man, but yet a man anointed of God, Peter says. So Jesus also showed us the power of the spirit of God. And in scripture you have is called the adventure of the blood. But you know, it's, it's a scriptural justice that we read about an adventure of the blood. This was part of God's ordained law. Okay? This is one that we don't carry over into our day. But if somebody killed one of your relatives, then there's a relative of that family that begins pursuing you. He's an avenger. And the person that the scripture says, let the angel, let the messenger of the Lord chase them. And this, and the people that are coming under that judgment, they're running. But there was also a regulation that God had where they wouldn't get killed by that avenger. And they had these, what we call cities of refuge. They said, and if you're being pursued by the avenger, you can run to that city of refuge. And there, if it was like a manslaughter then, you didn't mean it. If you stay in that city, you can live. But once you go out of the boundaries of that protection that God's permitted for you to have, beware, because that avenger is going to get you. And that was, that was part of the law of God. And those people that were on the run, they had to stay. You stay. Because if you go, he, the avenger gets you. You leave your God-ordained protection, that barrier he's permitted you to be in, then, then know of a surety, the avenger of blood. That relative has every God-ordained right to go get you. But when the death of the high priest happens, then you're able to go. Then you don't live in fear of that avenger, which is the type of the body of Christ in the cross. Because all humanity is guilty guilty of the death of Jesus himself because he died for the sins of the world and you could flee into that city of refuge that body of Christ the church and also because the high priest died for us Jesus we go we'll see that's really good teaching so there are keys of the kingdom that you don't you can't always tell them all and so we in the church, we don't say astral projection, okay? But we have these promises that God takes us to places. So I can give you some. You know, early this morning, there's this office computer center. But there's a lot of people that are working on things, okay? And it's downtown, but nobody really is aware that there's people working. I was there, yes, I was there early. There's this nice, this, this nice 500 square foot, very expensive though, condo. me walk all those videos in New Jersey. It's right off of the view where you see New York City. And it costs 180000 It's not a whole lot, but it is. 
but it's small. It's only 500 square foot, but it's got the view. You see the whole city. Did you, uh, did you see that division? I see it every now and then. For real. Okay, so now we, uh, our strength doesn't come through the ability to harness resources. But be assured, God does give resources to his people, to his church. <laughs> and we have the ability to have influence. And one of the greatest ways we do these things is we speak truth. Okay? <laughs> the greatest power that we have as believers is we're in a supernatural realm. We don't access the sources of the occult. But many of the things that they do, and this is an area, okay? It's the south, 40-something miles, coming inland from Corpus Christi. But there's a big history of a lot of this stuff. The Christians have this power. When the chapters that are going up on the teaching videos that I didn't post are Acts 15, but the one I did Thursday here was Acts 16. And there's this demon-possessed woman who's following her famous story. And she says, these men are, the, are sent from the Most High God. They show unto us the way of salvation. But she was a fortune teller. And when I post that, the actual term was Python spirit. Okay? And it has to do with what's called the Oracle of Delphi, where they thought they could tap into and they did, but they were tapping into demonic realms that are forbidden for us. But this woman had, and the, the Greek term is python spirit. It says a spirit of divination. And so she saw, wait a minute, Paul and Silas, they're up in the supernatural realm, which was the kingdom. In the scripture, sometimes the demons that are possessing people recognize Jesus. And he tells them, don't speak. That's not James, the, uh, the letter of James. It says, the devils believe. And they trump and they trump. So you've come, <laughs> you've not come, Hebrews. This Mount Zion, this heavenly mountain that we are on, it says in the Old Testament, when the law was given from Sinai, also talks Horeb, but the law given, there was this great, the writer of Hebrews says, that there was a sphere, there was this quaking at the manifestation of the law of God. And then the writer of Hebrews does something different that the other letters don't do. They, they usually compare the severity of Moses and the law with the grace of the new covenant, but the right of Hebrews, because his audience is true, he's saying, how much more severe, how much is this thing? See, those that are outside of the covenant, those who are not believers, how much more do they fear? And when they see, like that woman, that they refer, they, the re reason is the lady in Acts 16, it's actually called a python spirit because there was a mythical snake, a, p a python, that supposedly possessed these people that were operating in this demonic gift of fortune telling. They also referred to them as ventriloquists. It's not talking about people today who are gifted because they, but the term ventriloquist was applied to those who operated in that demonic spirit because it wasn't them speaking. It was the demon that had that capability to access certain hidden wisdom. But yet we in the church have greater power. We have greater power. We have secrets of the kingdom that the reason Jesus says some you don't tell. I've told you a few today. He says some you don't tell because those that are in that area of ministry that they're caught up in the performance, okay? That they have to tell. I remember I heard a story 
a long time ago of a famous, he was a famous uh, preacher on TBN, but he, he stayed at one of my friend's houses a long time ago. And I told him some, I told my Christian friends some things that were going on, how God did things. And uh, he shared some stuff with his famous evangelist many years ago. And the first thing, the famous, he stayed at my friend's house in Kingsville. It was like a revival. But he knew people from TBN. And I, when my friend shared some things that I was telling him, just that God was doing. But the preacher was like, oh, i got to immediately go to TBN. And I, I want to tell everybody about it. You see, but then uh, that's one of the keys. When you do, when you tell everybody about everything that God does, you lose that key. So, there was a prophet many years ago, a prophetic man, I, I won't give the name, but there were leaders, presidents and leaders of different countries that he had an open door with because they were telling them things that were happening or going to happen. And we also had American presidents that had relationships with people that functioned in some of these gifts. And so, even world governments recognize there's something else with these people that are people of God's kingdom. And so, the woman that's following Paul, she's speaking the truth about them. And, and that demonic spirit was able, like James says, the devil's belief, and they tremble. <laughs> But then Paul stopped. After a few days, she, he, I command you, he says, in the name of Jesus Christ to come out. And he came out. The python spirit left. And then the rest of it, I teach it in Acts 16, will go up in a week. Okay? So now you saw some keys. You saw some keys. There's also a story in Acts where Philip... He's functioning in the gift of evangelism. And the Spirit took him. Physically, he was somewhere else. And there was an old missionary in Mexico. Brother Roloff told this story. And I believe it from Brother Roloff. But this old Baptist missionary, he couldn't get to certain mountainous areas. And he told Brother Roloff that God actually transported him. Physically. And when Brother Olaf told that, I was in the church many, many years ago when he shared that story. And he was saying, there's so many keys in the kingdom. So today, I'm out here. And just remember that. Remember the church, the people of God, they bypass a lot of things that worldly governments here. We have direct access. So I told Austin, I said, no, I don't, I don't use any of those occult practices. I said, but if you knew the power that we really have, but it, it comes right from Scripture. It comes right from Scripture, okay, the, the Avenger.